<laughs> Greetings. And salutations. <laughs> hey guys, it is day eight. Day eight of quarantine. Um, and um, to, what is today? Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Yes. It doesn't um, feel like a Tuesday. Kind of feels like a Monday again. Yes. Maybe Monday. But it was so bad yesterday. It's kind of like Groundhog's over. Day. You know, it's kind of like Groundhog's really Day. Could we pick one of the better days for it to be Groundhog's Day? I know. <laughs> like, we just should. repeat that one. <laughs> All right. It's Christmas. You Christmas. Know, keep getting presents over Yeah, that and over would be again. great. Um, so, how updates. Uh, I'm doing better. Uh, no more sore throat, no more scratchy throat, feeling really good. Um, Gail says, I. I, I Gail says I'm sleeping really good. Uh, he seems to be sleeping, sleeping just fine. Really good. I guess mm -hmm. I'm snoring more, but I don't know. Sometimes I just feel like I'm waking up a lot. I don't know, but she says I'm sleeping really good, but I'm feeling really good. I'm in a happy, happy, happy mood. Feeling so better, clearly. Feeling better, yes. Thank he almost you. lost his life at about eight this morning when I look over at him and I was like, babe, I feel like crap. And I start listing off all my symptoms. And with all the sarcasm he could muster, said, why don't you go gargle some salt water, babe? <laughs> okay. I meant that. I'm yeah, sure really. he meant it like caring for me and like, yes. oh, let me help you here. <laughs> um, that's not how it took it. But I did gargle salt water. I am an obedient wife. It may take me a couple days, but I am obedient. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I woke up not feeling too hot this morning um, and <clears throat> started with scratchy throat yesterday. And then um, this morning, it kind of escalated quickly to yes. I hacked all night. Um, by the morning, I was short of breath and um, just hacking nonstop um and runny nose and so i wound up just messaging the doctor hey can you call me in some cough medicine um because that's what we had to do yes. for him on friday last week so um she called me pretty quickly and it's like list me your symptoms and ask me like a million questions and she's like i'm gonna need to call the doctor or call and make some uh, questions and call you back so basically they decided to have me tested for the covid19 um and the household is now under official, official quarantine. quarantine. So technically this is day eight for us, but like day one, one for like, we're not allowed to leave the house for 14 days or until we, I guess we hear something, I don't know. So I guess it'd be <laughs> eight slash one. Right, yeah, I'm not sure I, how well, much. I, 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 I don't, I don't know. know, I think maybe it'd be tomorrow, eight slash one, yeah, be tomorrow. Be nine, be nine slash, slash one. one tomorrow. <clears throat> well, I'm not good at math, so either way, um, luckily we were already prepared. So, um, getting tested was kind of a creepy experience. Yes. I thought like you go to a sketchy part of town, you go into a completely <laughs> abandoned parking deck and it's then like you wait for drug dealers. I mean, it kind of felt like on. that. You like roll up and they're like, what are you here for? What, you know, what time you're supposed to be here? And what's you, your name? Yeah. And you yeah. roll in and Social they're like, number. roll down your window. <laughs> what's your name? Roll up your window. And you're like, wait, wait. Uh, 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 uh. so it was, it was a little bit of experience and, um, the one lady, um, that I asked about recording got really ugly. I felt like that was unnecessary. And, um, normally I'm an extremely obedient woman or I try to be, yes. Yes, um, in are. this moment, um, I felt a little, um, I, I don't know. I think it maybe it was because of her attitude. She came she off so really, mean. really mean. And, and I so when I went to pull to the next person, I thought, you know what? It's my car. It's my face. I'm not recording anybody else. I just wanted to record it um, because I've had other people that have been really afraid to get the test done. And if you have to get the test done, I just wanted to have a record of what it was like and whatever. So anyway, so I recorded it anyway. And um, I felt like it was my right to do so. I didn't record anybody else. But I'm not normally a, a rebel. But no. I was being a little rebellious. So... <laughs> I think it was the, the lady's attitude. She came off really. And then when I asked, yeah, when I asked and, why, right, she, she just looked like, at me like, die. I mean, and, and I guess I just wanted to make sure. So this way, when they pulled it out, you know, um, I, I, I don't know. I, th I think it would have been kind of interesting just to see what, how far they actually do they pull it shove it all the way in and come out through your throat or, or, or what, you know, I will, did it touch the back of your brain or I something? Think, I think know? they touched the brain, <laughs> but I will say that one of the videos I saw on TikTok, it like, it looked like they went up and down. Like the person looked like it was gagging them. 
Um, and it was not like that at all. It was almost kind of like a flu swab. So um, anyway, it wasn't bad. Um, and the way I see it is it doesn't really matter to me if it's COVID-19 or the old fashioned coronavirus that we all get every year. I just want to feel better. I just started feeling better. I don't have time for this crap, people. So I do appreciate the prayers. Um, I appreciate those who commented this morning. I just jumped on Facebook and was like, guys, please pray. <laughs> and I really do appreciate that. She's um, like, I just got over something. <laughs> that's literally how I feel. Um, I'm thankful for the cough medicine um, with CF. You have to be really careful with cough medicine, but also we have this incredibly powerful cough mechanism because I've literally coughed my whole life. So I have to be <clears> super <throat> careful if I cough that dry, hacky cough too much, I start blowing blood vessels and start coughing yeah. up blood, which then causes its own um, little fiasco. So um, the cough medicine seems to be keeping my um, kind of achy body a little bit better and my um, the cough is, you know, pretty much under control and just tired. And so. I think it helps you sleep too. It does, you know, yeah, because when, when you're not coughing. Because like yeah. last night I coughed and hacked and it was hot and it was cold and just ugh, icky. So anyway, enough of that. We're just going to move forward. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, and for work task, I think uh, actually for <coughs> me, it was kind of a light day. I took care of the chicks. Um, Took, all the ladies in the yeah, neighborhood. All the ladies in the neighborhood. I went over there and kind of fed them some crumbs, you know, and laid down some bedding for them and gave them some water. <laughs> I'm about to get dark in here. Go ahead. Uh, so, uh, you know, just took care of the animals. Uh, I think part of it was just, you know, going with you. Yeah, uh, you like to go I said, with you. Um, and other than that, just kind of did a little cleaning. Didn't do a whole yeah. uh, much. Um, I saw clients this morning. Yes, you did. And, um, you know, so, and, and, and you guys know that huge storm came through. If you don't live in this area, yes. this huge storm came through this morning and it wound up knocking out a lot of internet. So I had a couple clients who couldn't get um, the internet working. And then my internet was acting all kind of crazy. Um, so it was a little complicated. Um, telemed's great when it works. Um, but with whatever happened, yes, sir. Oh, what I was going to say, when we went to uh, Walgreens to get the medication, uh, it blew up the speaker. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny because the, they're like, what? <laughs> yeah, you were screaming through the hole, which was great. Um, but, I mean, it is yeah. what it is. So, um, but it made me feel good that it wasn't just our house. Because we live in the country and you never know the internet's It's wired internet, which we're super grateful for. We didn't have that in Cape. Right. Um, but, and that was really bad. Like, if it was, it was like cloudy, yeah. the internet didn't work. Settled. If it was sunny, the internet didn't work. You know, if it was snowing, the internet didn't work. So, we were super grateful like for flip a coin. wired we internet. Yeah. Darn it, we're not having it. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, but I did get to see some clients and that always feels good. Um, just to at least be effective and, um, I don't know, make a difference in the world even when you're stuck at home. I guess it makes you feel nice. better because people have worse problems than you. You're like, oh, no. no. <laughs> I don't ever feel that way. But I think it's nice sometimes just to, um, I was working with somebody today about being present. And, and I, I was sharing that one of, I think, the most powerful things I learned in graduate school was about how to be present in this moment and um, that has really served me well because like even if I'm sick or life's crazy or stuff's going on with the kids or it really doesn't matter when I sit in that chair, at least for 60 minutes, I get to be completely 100% in the moment and all those things outside those walls don't matter. But because I've learned to do that, I also use it in other areas of my life and where I try not to worry about, you know, what's tomorrow going to hold, what's going to happen later. If I'm having a moment right now, like even videos. And, and I use the example of last night, how I had had a little frustrating situation to take place right before we filmed. And so I dealt with it. I closed my, you know, closed that situation. And then I just breathed for a second. And then we filmed because I try to be present in what I'm doing. And I feel like I have more rich memories that way because my memories aren't so separated by I was there, but I was thinking about so many other things. I wasn't present. So it's not one of my tips for today, but I'll throw that yeah. out there for free. Hey, that's a free um, one. Being present is super helpful um, just because it does allow you to enjoy. And it, it kind of does play into my tip a little bit. <coughs> um, for fun tasks, we didn't really get any today. Um, it's just, yeah, I mean, from just start to go, we've been a little either busy or, you know, um, had something going on. So... Um, hopefully tomorrow we can get some more fun tasks in. I think my fun task for tomorrow will be to like 
maybe stay in my pajamas all day. That may be nice. I don't know. Hmm. We'll see. So um, I always say that. Like every time I say I'm going to stay in my jammies all day and rest. Something happens. I always, well, that or I just like feel like getting up and getting dressed and getting ready and whatever. So anyway, we'll see. Um, but my tips, I'm going to jump like literally right from being present to using this opportunity. So I was really thinking about all these different comments that people are putting on Facebook about, oh my gosh, now people know what it's like to be a stay-at-home mom. And now teachers are more appreciated and all of these different comments. And I thought about the fact that what a, it may not feel like a great opportunity for a lot of you who feel like, but this is outside of my routine. This is outside of my norm. You need, you're you used to doing something all the time and being busy. And maybe you're not used to spending that much time with your kids. Maybe you're not used to spending that much time with your spouse. So instead of seeing it as, oh my gosh, when are they going back to school? Oh my gosh, when is he going back to work? Seeing it as, okay, what can I use in this opportunity to bond with my kids? You know, some of the funnest memories I feel like we had with our kids was the year that we had that ice storm. Remember that? We and we literally, <clears throat> I mean, it was a massive ice storm. All the power was out. Um, our neighbors had hot water and we had hot air. So like, and gas, yes, we had a gas, had stove. A gas stove. So we traded, um, they would, we would cook and we, and we shared at their house. So like we cooked the food at our house, we showered at their house so that it was kind of give and take. And it was a shower by candlelight because there was no electricity. Um, but the time that we spent with the kids, it all bundled around the fireplace for days. Um, it really is stuff that I really, those are such rich memories. And, you know, were all of our groceries rotting in the fridge as it was happening? Yes. Was it a mess outside? Yes but there was really nothing we could do about it, but just wait for the utilities to come back on and wait until it was safer to go outside. So we just kind of enjoyed it. We played cards with the kids. We played Monopoly. I learned that games. Justin's a cheater. <laughs> um, my children make their own rules up to the games. I'm a rules person. If it says it on my paper, we do it. And uh, my children play prison rules. Flexible they just make yeah, yeah, blessed are the flexible. flexible. I do I say it. that, but rules <laughs> are made to be kept. <laughs> so, but but those are the things that I'll hold on to forever, kind of like the socks in the couch. You know, Justin <laughs> always puts dirty socks in the couch when he comes to visit. Even to this day. Still, Still when he comes to visit. I, I would be hurt if I didn't find dirty socks in the couch. I'd know he was mad at me or something. So anyway, but you have the opportunity to make memories that um, maybe you wouldn't have had the opportunity to have otherwise. Because how often is mom, dad, and all the kids home for weeks on end? Um, and I know that that means that sometimes it's frustrating. Um, we were talking earlier about how when the kids were a lot younger and a lot louder, um, I remember Oscar sitting upstairs. We were, we were in the living room. The kids were downstairs just being kids. And he's like, oh, my gosh are they ever going to be quiet? And I'm like, baby, one day, one day you're going to sit in a house with no children and say, it's too quiet. I miss the noise. And he goes, Oh, I just don't think that'll ever happen. No, I just don't mm -mm, no, I just, I, I'll look forward to that day. I ate those words later on. <laughs> yeah. So, and it's true. I mean, I miss the noise and uh, we like when Russell comes to visit because he's quite the rowdy one. And so uh, we always know when he's home because yeah. he just brings an energy with him. So, you know, we say all these things just to, just to encourage you to um, don't look at this as, oh my God, this is messing up my schedule, but it may be a chance for you to be a kid again. Um, we were talking earlier with Maddie about how she's seeing online that some people like putting up forts in the living room, pull out your Christmas lights and some old sheets and make a fort with your kids. Maybe you've never had the chance to do that. You know, what a great opportunity to teach your kids how y'all used to play before video games and I all think, that stuff. I think my fondest memories was uh, when it snowed and that blizzard or that frost came in and we were uh, all snow or fr frozen in or whatever, where uh, I grabbed the, the wagon. And I where think, you were sledding? Yeah, well, I think it was me and Maddie. I believe it was yes. me and Maddie. We were up on the hill. And uh, we uh, took, uh, got on the wagon, and Maddie and I went down the hill on the road. It was just a sheet of ice. 
and we slid all the way down and at the end of the street and we actually went down the street on the grass up to the the late this lady's house it was an elderly lady and she's standing there on her porch and she's looking at us and she said aren't you a little too old to be doing that and i got I, maddie and i got off the wagon i said man I said, no, ma'am. I said, no, I'm not. And she just kind of chuckled and turned around and went back inside. And Maddie and I kind of just tried to work our way back up Took the hill a while, to, yeah. to, go, to do it again. Oh, but it was just, it was so much fun. Yeah. That was just a blast. Yeah. So we don't have snow right now or ice, but yes. there's ways to make memories. And you can choose to have a kid's heart right now. Maybe you have a job that's super stressful. And a lot of times you're not able to have a kid's heart. <coughs> Or a child like mine. But, you know, when you're home with your kids and it's uncomfortable, maybe for some, choose to try to remember what it was like to be a kid. And what kind of things would you have wanted to do with your parents if you'd had the opportunity? Because if you're from our generation, our parents didn't always get in the floor and cuddle with us. It was more like go off and play. So um, what kind of memories do you want to make with your kids? And maybe you're home alone and it's just you. Um, we are very blessed to have technology that you can reach out um, because guess what? You're not the only one that's home alone. You know, there may be elderly in your church that's home alone um, and don't sit at home thinking, well, nobody wants to hear from me. Trust when I say that there's somebody that wants to hear from you. Um, my dear friend from Alabama, Marla, um, she went by my mother's house today, just said that God put her on my heart, put her on her heart and took my mother a bag of groceries and a oh, meal for you. dinner. And so, you know, most of us are on quarantine or at, like, at least we, we are and in some states you're in complete quarantine. So maybe going to people's houses isn't the best idea, but you can um, call them. You can pray for them over the phone. You can video chat them if they know how to work technology. Um, there's a lot of options for what you can do. Um, and if you are sitting home alone, don't just, and you don't know who to call, there are a lot of resources in the community. Um, I know that a lot of the like AA and NA and Celebrate Recovery and a lot of those different, um, forms and, and other, um, caseworker type, uh, public services, I'm sorry, um, are offering online coaching, online calls. There's warm lines you can call. Um, so don't sit at home and allow yourself to crawl into a deep depression. Um, just reach out. You know, there's always somebody there. I know uh, since all this started, <coughs> uh, I make it a point to at least call my brothers and sisters, you know, just to check on them to make sure they're doing okay. Um, you know, make sure you got, everybody has family. So yeah. just check on them, make sure they're doing okay. Um, you know, like Gail said, you don't necessarily have to go to their house, you can just call them. Call them. You know, that'd be nice. Yeah, and I've been seeing a lot of heart-touching videos of people who have loved ones in nursing, nursing homes, homes who yes. go sit outside, outside the window. The window. Yeah. Um, and some of them are heart-wrenching, so I don't encourage you to go yeah. Google that because unless you need <clears throat> a good cry. Um, but it's, I mean, there are, there. if you if you want to do something, there's a will, there's a way. Right. So anyway, that's the, my tip. Um, scripture for today is Psalms 118, 17. The Lord put this on our heart this morning. Um, and I just happened to look it up and it says, I shall live and not die. Excuse me. I'm putting words in God's mouth. <laughs> I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. And I thought that was, um, you know, when I first heard about the coronavirus, I think a part of me, I was still in the hospital and I, I did have a little window of fear of, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. Like, are you saying that I could have fought cystic fibrosis for 42 years to turn around and a stupid cold kill you? What? Are you serious? But then of course the Lord's psh, knock it off. Um, but you know, most of you who are healthy and young and, you know, hopefully not being irresponsible, but even if you do get it, it's not going to be a big deal. Um, and there's just a lot of you who just aren't taking it very seriously. And for that, I, I understand but it's the people who have transplants. It's the people who have kidney failure. It's the people who are over 60. It's the people who genuinely could die. I mean, anybody could die from it, but the people that seem to be the most at danger, you know, they may be needing this word that God says that you need to declare. And, and I think that's the important part. It's not enough to be like, well, God says I'm gonna live and not die. 
well, what are you saying? Are you saying, well, I hope I don't die from this. I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of power in our words, don't you think? Yes, yes. And I mean, the Bible says the power of life and death is in your tongue. Well, it's just like, well, I'll, I'll give an example. We had, when we lived in uh, Jackson, we had these two, um, what were those trees? Oh, the wisteria. Uh, wisteria. And we didn't know that you have to have a male and a female in order for them to... Uh, bloom. Bloom. Yeah. Well, I guess we had two of whatever. Two males, two males or two, two females. females. I don't know. Didn't work out. They never bloomed, and we had them for years. Eight, eight years. And uh, one day, uh, when we found out, or I guess be, just before it we found out. It was before we found, we found out, out, yeah. And uh, I just stood there, and I started cursing at one. I said, you know, I just said, you just better start blooming. And I just talked negative. And told him you were going to kill it. Yeah. You're like, if you don't bloom this year, I'm cutting you down. down. Well, I went to work, and I think I went to... At the time, I went to Bilal, and I think I was gone for about three days if I went up there. Mm -hmm. By the time I came back, Gail uh, had called me, and she said, you you need to come back and uh, talk. Apologize. Apologize to this tree. And I'm like, yeah, right, whatever. When I came back, this thing start, was starting it to was wilt. It was starting to wilt. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And so uh, up there I was apologizing to it, petting it, you know. <laughs> you, but you took the words back. But yeah. I took the words back. Well, about another three or four days later, it was actually starting to put, uh, leaves, on again. Uh, yeah. put leaves on and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, it really does. You know, the power is in our tongue. Mm -hmm. So you really need to be careful what you say. If you speak life over yourself, yes, you will have yeah. life. Mm -hmm. And I've had I've known people to talk um, negative over themselves. Like, oh, my gosh, I, I'm going to have this. Or I'm I'm mm -hmm. losing my mind, or I'm this. Well, over time, it happens. It happens. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful what you say. Mm -hmm. um, and there's biblical precedent yes. for it. Jesus did it. Um, he cursed a fig tree and said, yes. "You'll you'll never produce again," and it died. Um, and I genuinely, I honestly did not realize that you could curse a tree. Um, but I I'm telling you that is the God's honest truth that. It, and and there was two of them, and the other one was fine. It never started dropping leaves. It never began to wilt. It received the same water, the same everything. Just, Just Oscar yeah. had, because it was the one closest <clears throat> to the door, and he, he yelled at it, and he, you know, threatened it. And I literally was floored, and I almost in jest. was like, you need to apologize. That tree is going to die. dying. But he did it, and sure enough, that sucker started bouncing back. So... I'm just, so I guess that really begs the question, what have you been cursing in your life? What maybe, what dream has been dying in your life that maybe you cursed with your own mouth? Um, I had a very dear friend once tell me we were praying over a situation that they had in their body and they're like, well, you know, yes, Satan does attack us, but we do enough work ourselves. There's a lot of stuff that Satan doesn't have to do to us because we speak it over ourselves. We, we're irresponsible with our diet. We're irresponsible with our behavior. You know, so the devil does do some things. But, you know, if we're speaking death over ourselves every day, we can't be shocked when somebody dies if that's what they spoke every day. You know what I'm saying? So I think that may be a good uh, one for you guys to sit on, at least for tonight, is or think about as you're going to bed is, is there an area of my life that's been dying or dry or unfruitful because I cursed it? Um, what areas do maybe you need to repent for that and just ask God, forgive me for speaking death over my life and please help me to do better. Um, I know when we first started learning about the power of the tongue, uh, we got that Charles Capps book. If y'all seen the little, little kind of pocket books and, it's, and it was like the power of the tongue. And I just remember how mortified I was at all the terrible things I used to say about myself and to myself and, oh, I'm so stupid. I'm so worthless. And I was just cursing all kind of stuff all over myself. But I, I try to be better about that now. Um, any last thoughts on that? Or <clears throat> Oh, the last part. So it's not enough to just live. God just doesn't want us to live to, you know, be alive, but to declare what he's done. And so, um, I love that, that, you know, God, I listened to a sermon of Pastor Gary's this morning. I shared it on Facebook. Um, and it talked about how one, one of the things that was in it said that don't let your last victory, your last, your healing or your, your big victory that God did for you be your last thing. 
let it be a propellant. Not like I've arrived, God did this for me. Yes, yes, I'm the girl God healed. Yes, yes, but never move on. Let it be that propellant that moves you forward. So, and we do that because we wanna be able to declare how awesome God is. Not just so that he'll just do the exact same thing for somebody, but something more and building that faith. So it's not enough to just live. You gotta live and declare how awesome God is and what he's done in your life. And you know, that old nasty saying, you gotta have a test to have a testimony. So some of us, boy, we working on a testimony, aren't we? All right, plans for tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow, uh, rest. And since we didn't get a chance to watch our movie today, yeah. we are going to watch it tomorrow. Yeah. Um, also, we got to clean up the chicks, uh, the tub we have them in, and I guess we're going to play with them a little bit, time and get them used to us, so this way they're not as skittish. When I went to check on them tonight, boy, they are just running, hiding, or trying to hide. You know, they're all bundled, huddled, huddled up, up together. And, and everything, and you're just like, Wow, chill out. You know, you forgot gonna, us already? Yeah, wow. You know, okay, I'm, not gonna, yeah. I'm not gonna do anything to you. <laughs> well, you know who hasn't forgotten us? <clears throat> the cows. Oh, I know. Every time you walk outside, boy, they're just yes. like no um <laughs> Seymour, feed oh. me, oh, feed yeah. me, Seymour. Yeah, oh. they're rotten. Yes. So anyway, well, we love you guys. We thank you for joining us every evening to um, just share our day. We love to hear feedback yes. and see what's going on in your life. What tips are you using every day? And um, what kind of things are you doing to keep yourself positive? That's what I want to know. Like, you know, you guys know what we're doing. What are you doing? That'd be mm -hmm. fun to know, right? And if you have any prayers or anything, Absolutely. any requests, uh, just, just let us know. Drop uh, them down yes. in the comments below. Um, you're more than welcome to share our videos because, um, and if you can't share it from Facebook, you can go to YouTube. We try to share our videos on v Facebook and YouTube just so that's easy for others to access. And, and, and I've received some really neat comments about how it was an encouragement. Apparently we're funny. I did not know that, but apparently we're funny. I hope that was a compliment. Kind of like not a like couple, I guess. weird and funny. I don't know. <laughs> but if nothing else, we're having fun and, um, it's kind of like a, a, Vlog, is that what they call it? A vi uh, I think it's called a vlog, a video log. Maddie, is that a correct a vlog. vlog? Oh, I'm sorry, you put it together. A vlog. 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 So it's like a video log. See, learn mm. something new every day. Don't know that. You, well, you know now. You've just been educated. Vlog. A vlog. A vlog. Um, so we can go back and, like I said, show our grandchildren how the crazy old people say, used to live. Oh, you so. guys were just a bunch of goobers. <laughs> anyway, we love you guys, and we will see you tomorrow night. Bye. Good night. Be blessed.